Welcome back to Hair Standards. This is the show that sets very high standards for women. If you have any feedback for us, you have a question, you have a comment, do reach us out to us on all our social media pages at KTN Home or you can hit me up directly at Queenie Bori on Facebook and Instagram or Queenie Saina on Twitter. Woman of the Week is Winnie Wangoi Kamau. Wangoi is a sports savvy marketer based in Nyandarua County. She is also a single mom of one and a striker with Karangatha Ladies football team nicknamed Movel Dadas. The eve of International Women's Day was an ordinary day for the footballer who lives with her 60-year-old grandmother, Mary Wangoi. To mark International Women's Day 2021, Karangada was to face off with Njambini women's football team. But Wangoi's biggest hurdle was how to juggle between the match and breastfeeding her baby who she brought to work as usual. She sought assistance from her colleagues to hold the baby as she joined the first half squad. But halfway through the match, Wangoi decided to feed her child. Unknown to her, her photo was doing rounds on social media. The mother of one who juggles work, football, and supporting her grandmother was shocked to receive calls congratulating her for the noble gesture. Breastfeeding in public remains a controversial issue and is highly criticized, but Wangoi believes it is the right of the child to be fed whenever they get hungry. She urges mothers to embrace breastfeeding in public in order to manage stigma and put feeding needs of children first. For majority of women, achieving work-life balance remains a struggle, with many career women opting to quit their jobs in order to start families. Wangoi's juggling act of courage is an inspiration to many mothers and serves as a reminder to women that your life and your career can indeed coexist for the better. Now knowing what we know and uh, 60 years after independence, we don't even have a female presidential candidate here in Kenya. Uh, you have said clearly that women need to know, they need to have a, a proper career plan in terms of what, they, they need to know exactly what they want. And I know there are women who want to be president of this country but uh, the path is not very clear for them. What can we do about this? I, I think, I, I, in my view, this is work in progress. Okay. And uh, it, it will not just happen unless we come together as a women team, join with the men, and they start pursuing. If we have a woman, we won't really elect her because she's a woman, as I said again. We <laughs> elect her because we are looking at that person and we are finding he can deliver goods and the services to Kenyans. Yes. Therefore, I think this is work in progress. One day, perhaps we are also asking, will we ever have a vice president like Kamara? Yes. Who now yeah, is the vice president of the, <laughs> the United States, States of America. America. Is Kamara. Yeah. And uh, we, we never knew that she was going to get that. Yeah. But uh, with being very deliberately targeted and uh, working hard about it and uh, building capacity through training, education, and the exposure. Mm -hmm. I think one day, uh, uh, and even if it's not in our lifetime, I see one day Kenya getting a woman president because there are women who have trained for this presidential Yes, seat. they have. They've and shown I think interest, yes. A few years ago, nobody would do that. But we have seen Mother Karua, yes. right? Charity we have Guru. seen Charity Giro. Giro. Yes. We have seen Madai, Madai, Madai. Yes. And I'm sure there are others. Yes. The fact that they tried, mm. that means pos it's possible. It's possible. Because I think that's what, we, in my view, women need to know it is possible. <laughs> it doesn't matter how long it, it, it takes, takes, but start the journey. Mm. I think another thing I also like sharing with women from my experience, even as we are trying to do something, we must ask ourselves, what challenge are we addressing? Mm? Because we are saying, when you want to, to uh, go into a leadership position, you want to go to a leadership position so that you can be able to influence policy yeah. and so that you can be able to have an opportunity to make a contribution. Yeah. So even now, as we are trying to find women going in business, 
we must always find what solution am Are I you providing? providing. Yes. Because if you are not providing a solution to an existing known challenge, then we, we also... Part of the problem. That's the part <laughs> of the problem. Yeah. And it, it's not good enough to identify and do nothing about it mm -hmm. or talk about it. But I think um, when women uh, come together as a support group, and I think they should be able to support all those who are vying for any position and also encourage them to vie for a position of the president. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't vie, you don't get elected. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. the starting point is to start now developing capacity for the, those who we see. And also the society should be able to reflect and say, who among our women can make can a good president? Support, exactly. Who is among our women can make a good member of parliament? Mm -hmm. So I think that is work in progress, but I see the society has changed because the number is slowly increasing. It's going up. And um, moving forward, I think by in, in the next year, I can see a situation where we have more women than before who have been elected. Right now we have 23 who are elected, yes. but I can see maybe getting the to 50. Will go high. Yeah, getting to 50 because women are preparing themselves. Yes. The society is getting aware of what women can, can put on the table yeah. if they became members of parliament. And I think if the government also has also created the right environment. Yeah. Because you may want to become uh, a member of parliament, but the environment is it's, not conducive. It's, it's harsh. It's yes. harsh. It's, actually, it has been yes, harsh. It has yeah, been the harsh. judgment has been extremely yeah. harsh. If you look at, at how the government now, especially education, I think we have made a lot of gains. Because That's at the primary level, we are almost 50 50. Nobody can complain. At the university, we are almost getting 40 60, the, those ratios. Mm -hmm. So I think when the government is very focused with the right leadership, I think can create that environment where now women have got an equal opportunity to try in whichever area, politically, economically, socially, to, to, to be able to make a contribution. You have stated clearly that for the society to move ahead, we need to bring in contribution and active participation of both genders, both men and women. Um, as we move forward to build uh, better societies in the post-COVID era, how do we ensure that we have brought um, men along in this battle? How do we ensure that they, un they fully understand what we have at hand and how do we uh, proceed so that we build better, so better societies in the post-COVID-19 era? I think we will not be talking about post-COVID yes. uh, soon because we, the way the, the, this new disease is uh, kind of it's mutating evolving, yes. and mm. it's new, we mm. are learning a new thing every time. Yes. So what, are, what the government is thinking is recovery mm. strategy so that we, as we go through the COVID, we are also building back and we are recovering. And in this effort, we need both men and women mm. on the table. Yes. So right from response committees where we have women and men uh, being able to sit down and say, where, what, what is the data pointing at at the moment? If the numbers are going down and we are going to get the vaccine, that means we are in the round of recovery. Mm. So what, what should our plans look like? What should the budget look like that will support the responses and also building back better? Mm. I think we have also learned that uh, through COVID experience, being inclusive mm. is very, very, very critical. Yeah. So you look at all the sectors, youth, women, men, mm. so that the decision we make or the plans we make are inclusive yes. enough. Yes. So we, we see a situation where COVID has given us an opportunity to learn, to learn that we, we need to learn how to manage crisis better. We, and we need also to profile our risks. Who is more at risk? For example, we have learned that those who are vulnerable suffer the most during the crisis. That we are talking about the elderly, mm -hmm. the, the poorest. Yes. So we now know that, uh, and then when the disease hits, mm -hmm. it, it does not differentiate between the poor, the rich, mm -hmm. the elderly. It cuts it across. Is, it cuts across. Yes. So nobody is safe until we are safe. We are all safe. Nobody is safe until we are all an equal society so that whatever our programs and plans take care of the vulnerable and they bring the society almost to a better quality of life for all. So I think it's very important that uh, we have lessons learned that we should use now as we build back better. Then we would have a, a, better, a better society. Two, we have also learned that um, 
discipline and order is very critical mm. because mm. the basic uh, I think managing COVID, managing yeah. COVID mm. and just these health measures. Yes. So also those you find the more we are disciplined, the more we are able to keep these measures, yeah. the more we are able to yeah. to, to all measures as as a, like washing hands, washing hands yes. wearing your mask mm -hmm. and uh, distancing. I think we, we have also learned that we have also learned that a country that um does not rely so much on importing yes. a lot of uh, items from outside, mm -hmm. including all the PPEs mm -hmm. were imported from mm -hmm. outside. Now we are actually we manufacturing yes. them. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing gives jobs to mm -hmm. our youth, to our people. So we have learned less. It might be a little bit expensive to manufacture our own things, but we are better off because when there is no uh, flight going out or coming in, at least we have, we have, something. We have our own uh, yes. product that yes. we can use as a country. Mm -hmm. We have also learned that uh, it's always good to save so that uh, for any day, for any day, yes. yeah, even if people, those who are employed, and uh, then yes. is when you f find a crisis, yes. we have also learned some jobs will disappear, yeah. but as others will be created. created. So those opportunities, we must yeah. start asking which jobs are, are disappearing now, yeah. because like in the public service and all over, yeah. they're saying now people are working from anywhere, is working from time. home. Yes. Uh, you know, yes. So what policies do we have that support? working remotely. Yes. So I think we have learned a lot. So much as we might be mourning some jobs have gone away, yeah. another job through technology. The future of jobs mm -hmm. is The world brighter. indeed became a yeah. global village. Yeah. Yes. And uh, finally, mm -hmm. we have also learned specialization is no longer useful. You need to be a generalist. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so that yeah. you are not just saying, okay, yeah. you're an engineer, but you're an engineer who can do business. Yes, you can sell. Yeah, you can be able to identify a need. That's true. And once you have identified the need, then you find you have the skills mm. to be able to provide a solution to that challenge. Mm. Because people who are succeeding in this world are those two people who are providing a solution Solutions. to a known challenge. Yes. Otherwise, uh, there's no need. If we know, like, because of COVID now, we realize we did not suffer a lot with the food shortages yes. because we realize the people from the rural mm. who I went more in farming, yes. the transport instead of carrying people, yes. they started yes. bringing, bringing food, food in Nairobi <laughs> with, the, yes. uh, with, the, with the matatus. Mm. Therefore, the matatu person saw a new opportunity. said, instead of carrying people, they ate, mm. let me change my matatu to be and bringing bring food some and they were in business. Yes. So the jobs of the future will really change to need kind of um, skills that are very cutting across Practical. and perhaps that's what now even as we are, that's why you find even in our education we moving towards competence-based curriculum because competence make provides you with several skills mm. that you can have critical thinking yeah. problem solving yeah. skills mm. and I think this for us even as women those skills we did not learn yeah. It's an opportunity to, to, learn, to, to learn problem solving yes, skills now, true. critical thinking, yes. so that you can be able to say, okay, I was trained as an accountant, yeah. but I can even be, an, I can do nothing. Yeah, I can exactly. do. I saw, I yeah. saw, I saw teachers when mm? they were out of employment. Mm? I saw yeah. them selling things from the back of yes, their yes, yeah. yeah. They, so I think it's in, once we should not always look at uh, the negative part of the COVID. There's a new wow, wow, new world. Yeah on uh, opportunities, opportunities. By, and lessons learned yes. and what are the implications. I think that's... Lovely. Mm -hmm. You know, talking of leadership, in the world over, uh, we have seen uh, a trend going uh, around of women, organizations that are led with women, countries that are led with women. I'm talking about Ethiopia, Germany, Iceland, Denmark. Uh, they have been hailed for having effective measures in managing COVID-19. Do you think um, there are lessons that we can learn from that and do you think this will change the perception that has been there in the world over that women do not make uh, effective leaders? Uh, I know that uh, currently yes. there are about 21 women heads of state and government yes. and I think that is a, 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 a number that uh, spell some uh, improvement yes. and uh, maybe promise for better future. Mm. Therefore, if we have 21 women who are head of state and government, and we look particularly how did they handle their countries during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic, there is data that is coming through that uh, 
countries led by women performed better in terms of the number of COVID cases reported, how they managed the, the, the mortality rate, mm -hmm. and the that. However, I think the data is still under process yeah, because it's, uh, not conclusive. it's not a very conclusive kind of data because you're saying it's for sure there is some indication and that means that we do further research that the countries that we may, where women were the hands of state, when it came to handling COVID-19 crisis, they were able to be more consultative yeah. within the government, to yes. bring everybody on the table, to yeah. are more... Uh, who are more empathy with the, the, with, the, with, the with the people, who are more true. collaborative. Mm -hmm. You know, I think men seem to be very competitive, it's, but women make, collaborate. Yes. I think mm -hmm. those skills and abilities which women have are better in managing crisis. Therefore, uh, with that evidence, and if it becomes quite conclusive, then we must start asking ourselves, mm -hmm. men and the women are different leadership styles. Mm -hmm. But uh, which one works under which circumstances? Yes, how do we draw yeah. the, the, the best aspects from, yes, from, from both, both genders, of them. from both men? Yeah, because I, I always argue those women who are not elected head of states because they were women. No, women. <laughs> they were elected because they, they have the qualified. capability and the capacity to, to do the job. Yes. Therefore, I think uh, that means now when it is better when men and women are together, yes. each one of them leverage on their strength. Mm -hmm and then they put them together, they are better able to deliver uh, for their countries. Therefore, uh, I think globally, and I think that's why we have sustainable development goal Goals, number five, yeah, yeah. so that we move to one gen promote gender equality, because we now know decisions that are inclusive in terms of gender, yeah. they are better. better. And if uh, men made a decision and women made a decision alone, mm -hmm. even in the Kenyan context, when women men sit together and decide we want to procure equipment for PPE, yes. you realize that the, without women's input, you are likely to procure things for one, for one type gender. of gender. That's true. And then they have come more the way because they are not locally produced. And then you realize your decisions are much better if yeah. you are inclusive, yes. both men and women. That's because true. how can one gender make a decision on matters that concern another gender, the gender without their input? <laughs> And even that inclusivity it should not just be confined to, to gender. gender. There yeah, could also be inter intergenerational equity, that you are the youth, mm -hmm. the, 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 the middle age, and also the, the elderly. Exactly, so I yeah. think all in being inclusive on the table mm -hmm. is one way of having an effective governance that would any government will deliver better than when we are just maybe very, very excluding and then and we the end genders. up making decisions mm -hmm. that you could uh, do not work well when you put them on the ground. So I, I think we have seen it here in Kenya. Yes. And I think if you reflect on uh, how Kenya is doing as far as gender equality is concerned, like, yeah. I think we have done well. Yeah, and a, even the way we have influenced the policies, yes. the policies that every time you have to consider gender in decision making and also even in terms of budgeting. The government also now budget for in so that we can be able to uh, promote gender equality. Mm -hmm. The fact that even there's a whole state department, I know. that means <laughs> it is a demonstration that gender equality matters. And I think moving forward, if you we look at the data, yeah. maybe in the last 30 years, mm -hmm. you can see a progressive incre increment. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. we are not yet there. We still have bumpy progress exactly. because of the socio-cultural norms yeah. that bound in many populations that think women are not leaders, men they are leaders. Men are so th leaders, those yeah. we have a long way to go. Mm. But I always lo like looking at it that um, we have made some gains. Mm. If you look at uh, because of the constitution of Kenya 2010, yeah. Yeah. I think it has made a lot of provisions that you cannot be discriminated because of gender. gender. And we also we have regional representation. We also have a um, bill of rights. So I think that Constitution 2010 is one of the biggest landmarks in to moving to one gender equality and women empowerment. Mm -hmm. Work-life integration is very difficult for women. And uh, looking at you, uh, you hold a very powerful office uh, I believe that you have um, a life elsewhere, out of work. You have family, you have friends, you have um, uh, acquaintances. 
how do you work out on that balance? How do you juggle all of this and still uh, succeed? I think one of the things women struggle with is work-life balance mm -hmm. because first of all, the fact that you are CS does not exempt you from running a home. <laughs> <laughs> Or looking after a husband, yes. <laughs> or looking after your children and mm -hmm. your children. Mm -hmm. So that is like given. Mm -hmm. And then you have a full tray in your office. Yes. So in the office front, what I do, I delegate a lot. I delegate, and the, when I delegate, I leave them to do their work. In the sense that also you make training opportunities available, available. so that they, what they do, they, it is work that it is finished. Mm -hmm. Then um, I, I also have like we, we we have like almost monthly meeting with my team right from classes, PSS, so that we we share yeah, the yeah, load yeah. and everybody is in the picture of where we are going. The good thing of having those kind of performance related meetings, everybody is on the same page. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the burden is not just on the mm -hmm. CS. CS, yeah. So uh, the CS, uh, yeah. Chevesh, mm -hmm. or PS Kimonia, mm -hmm. Coleta Suda know mm -hmm. what is their role. Mm -hmm. So that helps me a lot to cope with work-life balance. At home, I also have support team. And also, I always say women, nobody, if, if, even if you cooked or washed the dishes or iron the shirt, that's OK. <laughs> but if other people can do it and you give them a job, yeah, employ them, it okay. is also okay. okay. The only mistake you can make is if you don't train very well, and then now they don't do the right kind of, they have not been able to run the home. Yeah. So I think that uh, balancing is, is very important. And I also listen to myself. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm getting beyond, you know, that I'm getting some stress. Mm -hmm. For example, if I start forgetting, I know, because women must start having to know when you have the early warning mm -hmm. that things are not happening. Yeah, the system is collapsing. Yeah, the system is collapsing. Mm -hmm. I'm okay when my relatives say, but we never see you. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Family event, because now I can't. Yeah. There was a wedding here. Yeah. There was uh, something to do with the marriage here. So you must be able to feel comfortable in your skin the way things are for the time being. So we must be able to balance that. But what is important in my view, you can invest as much as possible in career, but you also need to invest in your family. And everybody has a family. We either have a mother, mother. a father, yeah. a sister, a, a child, brother, a son. So, a mm -hmm. son. Mm -hmm. so you must find that balance that uh, they'll need you somewhere and you need them. Because mm -hmm. these careers were at the end of it. I know. And you need to go back to that family. So if, you, if they grew without you, why would they need you now? <laughs> so I think uh, I, 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 I already advocate women can have it all. That question is asked a lot. Yes. Can you have career have, yeah, and the family? family? Because they tend to see like if you do very well in the career, yeah. then you are the most. Yes. Or you never marry. Yes. Or you never had children. Yeah. But you can have both, both in, a, in a way. But yeah. to be able to do that, you must also be very comfortable with the, what is saying around you. And uh, you must have clarity of what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the find the coping strategies for, 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 for you. And also being able to communicate very well yeah. with uh, your, your support support system, system. your children and your spouse. Because I think that is the hardest uh, issue when it comes to communication, mm -hmm. so that you are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. So I, I look for opportunities to have many women mm -hmm. rise up, mm -hmm. get um, high paying jobs, yes. but still retain, have families Family. to come back Functional to. Functional families. Yeah. And they, are, they have space for their mothers, yes. for their sisters yeah. once in a while. Yeah. In fact, one of my biggest family support is my sisters. Oh. Yeah, I, do, I don't have time for everybody, but at least my sisters. Yeah. <laughs> we spend time and they look at yeah. things and even laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, mm. that makes me keep wow. healthy. Thank mm. you, Madam CS. We appreciate you for taking your time uh, to come and mark with us International Women's Day of uh, 2021. You have given us uh, nuggets of wisdom and I hope that come 2022, uh, when you're celebrating a similar day, you will have made a lot of progress in the fight for women, uh, women empowerment and gender equality. Thank mm. you. Thank you very much <laughs> for having me. Mm -hmm. It's a rare opportunity uh, to share this experience with me. Mm -hmm. And if anybody else can feel that we are doing the, the right thing and learn from it, from it. why not? Exactly. Okay.